This is how to export your animation as a video file in Adobe Animate. So that video could be, let's say for YouTube, it could be for a master copy that you wanna keep, or it could be just that you wanna export it to bring it into another program like Premiere to do further editing. But either way, all you have to do is go up to File, and then down to Export, and across to Export Video Slash Media. Now, when this window opens up, if you have an older version of Animate, this window is gonna look way different. As I recall, the only things you might see are format, and you definitely don't have all these options. I think it's just QuickTime, and then you have output and this thing right here. So let's talk about output first. This is obviously where you click on this folder, and this is where you save your project. So name it, I'm gonna call it MOV export test, and I'm gonna put it in my video export test folder right here and click save. But as you can see, if you have the newer version of Animate, then there's a whole bunch of other things we can now adjust in regards to our export. So let's start up here with render size, and this is obviously where you can change the resolution of your exported video. Right now mine is at 1920 by 1080, so 1080p. And if you click here, I would work on this side. So the common ones, if you wanna downgrade a little bit, the, the quality, then go to 720, and that would be 720p. And you can see that this is locked, so the width you see lock, width, and height values together. So when I change this, it automatically changed this side. So the other common one is like 2160 for 4K UHD, but I'm gonna leave mine at 1080. If you did want some different resolution, I would do that at the start of your project instead of at the end. Down here, we have a box that you can click that says ignore stage color, generate alpha channel. So what that means is right now you can see that my stage right here is this blue color, which is my sky. If I click this, it's gonna say ignore that stage color and make it see-through. So it's kind of like a PNG image as opposed to a JPEG. So you would do that if you, let's say, made some sort of graphic or something that you wanna export and then overlay on top of some other video, let's say in Premiere or something like that. Next, we have the span at which we want to export. So there's a couple different ways you can approach it. I only have one scene, so this doesn't really apply to me. But if you had more than one scene, you could select, let's say, to export from scene one to scene four, and let's say not all of them. And then down here, you can put all frames. So that's the typical one that you'd export the entire kind of project down here. Or you can pick a frame range. So if I click this, I can go from frame 1 to 180, which is all frames. Or I can go, let's say I only want to go to 2 seconds. So I'm going to downgrade that to 60, which is 2 seconds right here. And then the final thing, which I kind of mentioned already, is format. So in older versions, I think you're stuck with QuickTime. But now you can click this drop down and you can pick from this whole kind of selection of things here. So the typical for like YouTube would be H.264 right here, or just kind of a regular MP4 file, you should pick H.264. If you're trying to save a master, like a high quality one, I'd select QuickTime right here. And really those are the two kind of main ones. As far as preset goes, this is basically where you choose the quality of this format. So if you pick QuickTime, I would suggest something like Apple ProRes 422HQ. It's a high quality codec that is easy to work with, like if you want to edit something later. If you're picking H.264, then for preset, I would pick something like, you know, high quality 1080p if it's 1080p, but you can also pick from the presets like down here for YouTube or Twitter or Facebook or whatever. So for now, I'm just going to pick high quality 1080p HD. At this point, the last thing you have to consider is this box right here. So if you have it checked, that means that when you hit export, Adobe Media Encoder is gonna start rendering your video immediately. So it's just gonna take whatever you have as these settings and then just render it and export it right away. If you uncheck it, then you're still gonna be able to mess with these further when you get to Adobe Media Encoder. So for now, I'm gonna check it off and then hit export. A lot of the times, Adobe Media Encoder is gonna take a while to open up, but if it doesn't, then just make sure you type in here media encoder and open it up yourself if you need to. When it does open, it's gonna load your animation right here and you saw there really quickly it already exported it. But if you're looking at this going, oh, I didn't mean to export as H.264 or you know whatever here, then you can just click on your video and then go up here to this little, like these sliders, add output 
that's going to create a new drop down here and then you can go in and actually change it to export it again or to change the output so i'm going to go to quicktime this time and i'm going to go down here to apple prores 422 hq like i said before and then now if i want to export again or if you just had unchecked that box then now all you have to do is click this little play button up here boom it'll export again this time as a quicktime instead of as an mp4 just take note that if you are exporting a video with an alpha channel in the background, so you want it to be an invisible background, then make sure you pick one of these that says with alpha. So with alpha or with alpha. Now, if we take a look in my export folder, you can see that I have exported three different versions of that same animation. One is the MP4 that you can see we can play right from whatever viewer you have. It'll probably play just fine. But these other two don't even show a preview. So the QuickTime ones, if you try and watch it, you might get this message that it's a missing codec. This item was encoded in a format that's not supported. And that's okay, because remember, this is not supposed to be like a preview file that you watch. This is a file that you're keeping as a master or that you're gonna use to edit in some other project. So if we bounce over to Premiere, you can see that I've already imported those three files right here. And if I double click on the MOV now, you can see that I can view it just fine here, play it, and obviously then edit with it within Premiere or After Effects or whatever. And I'll quickly show you the alpha one as well. So if I double click that, you can see that the background is black or it looks like it's black here because it's missing. But if I drag it over top of another clip, you can now see that it's not actually black, that it's actually invisible, that it's see-through. And this really comes into play. You can obviously tell for like graphics and stuff that you're gonna export and then use constantly to put over top of other footage. So then you don't have to get rid of the background. It's already done for you. But what if you don't have Adobe Media Encoder and you still wanna export your animation as a video? Well, then you're gonna need a program like Premiere or Photoshop instead. For more information about how to export using Premiere or Photoshop, make sure to click on the video that's on the screen right now.